As part of efforts to spur youth to action, especially in the face of the present dispensation, the Young Adult and Youth Affairs of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lagos Province 19 Auditorium in Ugudu, put together the fourth edition of the Relationship, Entrepreneur, Career, Leadership and Politics Summit, also known as RECALP. The summit, which holds yearly on Democracy Day in Nigeria, is a strategic move to equip the new generation of leaders, mostly young people, to align with plausible steps to attain their life goals. The world is changing very rapidly. Indeed, those who are changing the entire landscape of the world, they are youth. Is that okay? Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and every of what has transformed the world today originates from the mentality of the youth. But what is very important this morning as I give this short address is where is your own path? What is your own path? Last year, as I gave my address, I said to most of you who are here that by the time we come in 2018, your dream should be bigger. You should be better challenged. You should be getting closer to your dreams and your aspirations. Therefore, I sincerely hope that this will not just be a gathering for us to talk. Because I didn't see talk in recap. I see relationship, I see entrepreneurship, I see career, is that okay? And then you have leadership, you have politics, and you have all of it there. There is no place where it is just a mere talk. Just as the youth pastor has said, let this from where we have to bring in such great faculty be a mere waste of time. And the only way you can achieve and assure that is if you take maximum benefit of whatever happens in this place. As the ancient Chinese proverb goes, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Friends, you may begin to wonder whether you are still at the recap, youth summit, or agricultural class. But I assure you that there is a significant instruction to be drawn from those six words. Many of us either miss or do not have an opportunity such as today, where one in our youth, or perhaps 20 years ago, if you wish, we have mentors and trailblazers to give us instructions to success. But we thank God that now we have been presented with that second best time. Unemployment is high. And even people who have the few jobs are quickly losing it. There have been fact the lazy youths that shy away from taking all the responsibility you may talk about even where the leadership of the country begin to infer out of the country that our youth are lazy. But we know otherwise. Responsibility leadership, even though joining from the number of young adults present here today as well, as well joining us online across the world, I feel confident to say that our youth are not lazy. Our youths are of great internal strength. All they need is the chance and the time to prove it. What we currently see, if not arrested, portrayed a bleak image of our nation, 
Will these people's unguarded utterances and foolish deeds? If you don't take your place, if you don't fight for your right, let me say this very clearly, no one will hand you the reins of power just by the key. This is a call to action. As Christian youths and young adults, let us occupy in our Lord's second coming as Luke 19 verse 13 challenges us. Now do we successfully occupy by sharpening our edge in relationship, in business, in career, in leadership, and politics through wisdom, which is the principal thing. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. If you suggest that JFK made this statement in reaction to the general impression that young adults at the time felt entitled and this calls for the Americans to their greatest achievements of any ticket. I urge you today, let us become consumed by a body, fury, passion to prove that we are not lazy youths and young adults. Let us ensure the base and fruitless anger of the messenger. But let us turn that message to our advantage. Let us acquire the skill for cutting edge success in life today. And let us put that skill to use to influence our nation and our world. In summary, it's about equipping the next generation. One thing we've seen is that there's not been a focus on knowledge, on having something in the inside which you bring outside. I believe in a creative ability of man. And what we're trying to do is that how we can we wake up the seed of greatness in our youths. The key areas that affect you is so basically relationship. It's really critical because you get it right in relationship. It has impacts on your health and of course your future. And then beyond that is entrepreneurship. You know, today we talk a lot about people looking for a job. Now it's not just about looking for a job, it's about actually creating a job for yourself. We believe that's the future of things in this nation. Beyond that, there's so much apathy of the youth towards the drive for leadership. There's so much complaint, and we feel it's time now for the youth to wake up. So this is about motivating them, empowering them, and telling them that it's time to be involved in politics, because it's actually intertwined together with leadership. And for me, leadership goes all across, the home, the church, career, and almost everywhere. And there's a seed of being a leader inside that we need to wake up in them. Just like scripture says, look, um, when, there's, um, when they have the right leader, then you know righteousness will prevail in the land. So I think for me, this is like, it's like a wake up call for the church to play what exactly is their role in it. So it's all about telling our youths, look, you can't just stand there and complain. You must be a part. You must be the change agent. You must drive things and let's get things moving. And I think now there's a full realization. There was recently this campaign about, look, uh, we want uh, president on the 40, on the 35. You know, but we can say that. It's wanting to make the noise, but beyond that, we need to come real. Who's the candidate that we can present? It's good now that we're seeing candidates that are young coming out. Even though people are very doubtful that they will make it in 2019, but we know just the next five years, it's just a single lap, and soon we'll get somebody there. Recap was birthed about five years ago. The vision came through a group of youth pastors, and basically, for us, I think these two Lagos Province 19 of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, youth and young adults, was to impact the youth along four lines. One basic is relationship, two is career, three leadership, and four politics. Um, we believe that the church has come to a point that our impact goes beyond spiritual alone. So along these four lines, this was birth. And um, for me, this is the fourth year running. And counting the success story, I've seen impact in the life of these youths in their relationship. Many marriages have been birthed. Few that have been in wrong relationship, all these wrong thoughts were corrected. For me, seated deep are misconceptions in the life of our generation. Basically, from what they pick up on social media, from what we pick up on um, the society generally. So. For me, recap is a process of transforming the mind and uplifting the mind for the youth to fulfill their destinies. Ordinarily, um, the state of affairs in the country calls for different um, ways and responsibilities in equipping our youths for the future. 
and as a church yes it's good to pray but it's also very important that we begin to give them the right tools the right information and putting in the right mindset in them so that they will be able to confront the future very well and therefore if we look at recap we're looking at relationship just like mrs adejumo had just spoken on they must hear it raw and prepare themselves for what they are going into in a relationship in the future and then we talk about uh, entrepreneurship everybody's not going to get a white collar job any longer and indeed the world and the economies of the world are built on entrepreneurship so we want to inculcate those values of entrepreneurship mindset in them and then career you need to know where to draw the line you need to know what to do a lot of people are in careers simply because they have nothing else to do so we want to be able to let them know the different aspects of it and then talking about relationship as it were that's exactly and then politics <laughs> we need the world is being the governors in the world is being taken over by the young ones and they need to understand the rudimentary they need to know that why is it may be dirty people of christ mindedness need to go in there and clean it up and so we say recap in a way that everything will be embraced in this summit that we we'll have that was what led to you know creating this recap and it's an annual event that we do on this independent democracy day the summit which had thousands of attendees both live and online saw thought-provoking conversations by notable speakers Setting the tone for the day's discourse was the vocal Dr. Charles Akoki, founder of Petra Ministries and Development Capacity Coach, who spoke on the need for Nigerian youth to learn resource management, the role of religion in equipping the youth, and the need for resource distribution to empower all equally. Entrepreneurship is the ability and the skills to harness the factors of production, land, labor, capital, and moments to meet generational expectation and needs. So if you don't meet generational needs, you are not an entrepreneur. And if you don't have the skills, even if you are in business, you will fail. Research has shown that small and medium enterprises 95% of them fail within the first five years. And the problem with the black man is not that the black man is not blessed. The problem with the black man is that the black man is a poor manager of resources, people, and time. One of the problems with the black man is that he eats his palm fruit instead of allowing it to become a palm tree. In my hand is 1,000 Naira notes. If I squeeze it, it remains 1,000 Naira notes. If I step on it, it remains 1,000 Naira notes. If I spit on it, it remains 1,000 Naira notes. If the woman hides it in the brazier, it's still 1,000 Naira notes. So life can squeeze you, spit on you, fold you, and that is the problem most people complain about because life spat on me, life folded me. But I came to a realization that my value in God's hand and my ability to produce is constant. But now, you must listen carefully now. If you go to our Jota Park here now, every Friday, you will see where the load vehicles to worry that people are hawking new notes. When this 1,000 Naira is converted to 50-50 Naira notes, our five five naira notes, it will sell for 1,150. So the actual amount of this money is 1,000 naira. But you can release the potential in it and turn it to 1,150. Managing resources is the ability to bring in the potential that is trapped in everything you have. The problem with the black man is he celebrates only statistics. The white man celebrates what is beyond your imagination. The size of your wardrobe is not important if you don't have a library. Young women, the length of your attachment is not as important as the content of your head.
It's only a stupid girl that advertises. It's only a stupid girl that advertises breast. Breast has expiring days. After I sunk my mother's breast at the last point, she will throw it from forward backward. The size of your buttocks will become a liability if you don't have wealth for it. And so young men growing beards on an empty brain is a king of the The list of the six rich, 60 richest men are in my library. None of them has a beard. When you grow beards on an infertile brain, it's a sign of stupidity. For you to be an entrepreneur, you must know that you must invest in that area where people will need to eat, wear, move, be on a daily basis. And the good thing is that the poor eat more than the rich. The poor are very wasteful. A poor man puts toothpaste from the beginning of the brush to the end. It's only poor people that put stew on top of rice. Rich people separate them. So that when you don't finish, they put the remaining one in the freezer. Poor people have more sex. And they have more children. Poor people drink more. Poor people are louder. Poor people disproportionately use more percentage of their income for fashion. And so, as long as, in fact, it is the poor that make the rich rich. It is the poor that puts money in bank. He says he is saving. Then the bank will give you 1,000 men on top of 300,000, telling you you are stupid. And they will give that money to somebody else at 15% interest. So the rich are always broke. Anything you see a rich man do is an infinitesimal fraction of his wealth. And one of the things your generation must not do is overpackaging. Overpackaging in the midst of poverty is insanity. An entrepreneur, a good manager, is somebody who thinks of a future that has not arisen in the present and start planning for it. The earlier you cultivate the mindset of futuristic thinking, even if you do business and you make profit, you will go and buy a handset of 500,000. You will now buy a Brazilian weapon of 250,000. Carry on your head that has only PSC from Unilag. And 250,000 will give you 100 bags of cement. 100 bags of cement will give you 4,000 blocks. 4,000 blocks will give you a three bedroom bungalow. So you are carrying a three bedroom bungalow on your coconut head with PSC Unilag. And you are living in another man's house. Then you are stupid. I want to let you know, young men, for you to manage business, you need to use brain. How well have you managed your resources in the time past? How well have you managed your opportunities in the past? How well have you managed your past relationship? Now, three way near three, nine make more business. I want to quickly say that you must have insight. Every generation has challenges, but most persons who have managed resources well started by confronting challenges. The blessing of your problem is the lesson of your problem. When you want to design the hair of a woman, you do washing and setting. So we are doing intellectual washing and setting on the mind of the black man. I've taken this to the remotest part of Africa, Madagascar, Ethiopia, South Sudan, and the problem is the same. Now, the first thing we need to realize is stop, stop apportioning blames to people and start saying that this is our time. Like the song people sing, these are the days of Elijah. No, it's my day. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm next year I will be 60 and I have a granddaughter. Um, I see it as a duty to replicate myself. I became a medical doctor at a very young age. I left a mud house to the university. I opened my first private practice at the age of 29 in Aba. Now, Number one, government must provide a level playing field for potentials to manifest. If I had been born in this generation, I wouldn't have been a medical doctor. When I went to the University of Ibadan, government provided sound education. I went to a government college where we had swimming pool. 
and my father was a refuse collector. That leveling field that made me go to school with the son uh, of the secretary to the federal government, Agodo. I went to school, the same school with David Ejo. Ambody was my junior at FGC Wari. Moimi Edgar was far, far my junior, the commissioner of police. But his father was an elite. I was from a mud house. But the government provided a level playing field for, of education and accessibility to this education and affordability. It enabled me to be who I am now. But today, children of the poor cannot even enter universities to read medicine. Today, even the churches that we attend and the schools we have been built with our tithes and offerings, our, I hope I'm not causing problems. Even the schools we have built with our tithes and offerings, the children of the poor cannot attend. So we, and there is an elite capture in this country, a small percentage of the people of this nation, including the executive and the legislative arm. A Nigerian senator earns more than the American president, and the Asso Rock Clinic on its own got more allocation than 16 teaching hospitals. And there was no Panadol there, according to the wife's president. There has to be a resource distribution, redistribution. Let's take from the enormous amount that is spent on the legislative arm, spent on the executive arm, bring it to provide um, qualitative, free education. The school I went to, if you go there, it's like paradise. It's still there till today. It's one mile square. And let's give qualitative education to our children, affordable, like as Awolowo did, um, uh, Remy did in Kano, like as they are doing in other societies. And once we can have these affordable education. The educated mind, I mean sound education, not the ones of certification. I don't cross lawns. I don't cross lawns. I don't rush. I don't drive against traffic. I don't drag my feet. I'm disciplined because discipline was the foundation we had. So then the next thing is to redistribute resources to provide the basic fundamental opportunities, good health, security, and then create jobs by reinvesting. But the next thing we want to look at is that we need a, a, a mental shift of not seeing work as suffering. And seeing, we need to see, know that we came to this earth to walk this earth. Adam was created to walk this earth. We need to teach people about responsibility. And the church needs to de-emphasize these messages on the miraculous alone and concentrate on responsibility. Christianity is responsible. Don't you know I should be about my father's business? Christianity is about responsibility. And once we start re-emphasizing responsibility and then rewarding excellence and productivity. Also speaking at the event was Reverend Mrs. Funke Felix Adejumo, President Agape Christian Ministries, Mr. Adebola Williams, co-founder Red Media, and Dupe Akinsium, a leadership coach. Because of lack of self-esteem, correct and positive self-esteem, a lot of people just go into relationships. Oh, I just must leave the house. Oh, my mates are getting married, let me go. But marriage is more than that. It's not a weekend affair. It's a lifetime event and it determines everything. Everything, whether you make it in life or not. So you have to close one eye in prayer and open the other one in watching before you go into relationship. Don't marry because you think chronologically you are old enough to be married. It's more than that. A lot of parents are not home to give their children societal values, spiritual values, economic values, and even personal moral values. And it shows, it affects, you know, what goes on. If you don't prepare for it, something, you are likely to fumble. It's only in Africa, for instance, that we're not prepared for leadership. It's in Africa, you just become the first lady and then you're speaking some rubbish grammar and then you can't take care of your weight and then you can't take care of yourself and all that. Positional leaders should prepare for that. So preparation is very important and it goes back to the home, to the family. Mothers, fathers should prepare their children. Mrs. Kennedy would tell her children, any of you can be the president of America. So we should prepare our children because we have no idea where God may take them to. Also, physically, take care of yourself. You can't just be eating anyhow. A lot of people die before their time. At a quarter to their 
lifting and enthronement, they are gone because they have used their teeth to dig their grave. You can sit down on your bed at 10 p.m. and be eating pandya diem every day and malt. And your tummy is so big and then your heart is panting and all that. If I take my bath every morning, I jump up minimum of 100 times. I don't want to be slimmer than this, but I want to be fit because you need your heart. You can sit at McDonald's or KFC every day and expect to lead. A leader must be an all-rounder in every area. And then emotionally, you must be sound. There are people that will criticize you. There are people that will hate you. There are people that will tell lies about you. It's part of the package. So just get ready. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. Make sure you, you bless God, you honor God, and then you serve. Do your best and leave the rest. My take is that anybody can become anything. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. I constantly get worried that people in the church sometimes fail to realize that they are living in the same earth and that many of their prayer points are caused by failed policies. And, and so they then have a responsibility to do more as active citizens. Citizens of the church, citizens of the nation, citizens of the world. They have responsibilities to be excellent. They have responsibilities to demonstrate leadership. Um, many times I find that people always imagine that leadership is at the presidency level or at the highest office of some sort. What they fail to realize, like my mentor, Dr. B, always says, is that the highest office of the land is that of the citizen and not any office and if you can self-lead yourself in that office you're able to make change at the minutest position and at the biggest position and that is the only way our nation can work if we do better as citizens if we do better with our neighbors in our communities on our streets if we pay attention to our councillors to our chairman to our house of representative you know members to our senators then our governors before our president and if we even did our work excellently first and foremost not trying to provide you know inferior service for maximum profit so all of us have a hand to play in this moving wheel first as human beings to self-lead to self-correct to have the characteristics of a leader and then when we now have the characteristics of a leader to then activate it as active citizens and then to then hold accountable those who have contracted to supply as governors. There's nothing wrong in putting anyone in power. There's nothing wrong in being partisan. There's nothing wrong in campaigning for someone. And there's nothing wrong in them not doing what you think they should have done. What happens is you must always remember that you have the most power to put and to remove. And that's why everyone must get their PVCs. I realize that a lot of young people these days are out there job hunting without long-term plans of how to establish a, 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 a viable career for themselves. So that's what I'll be talking about today. What exactly is career? What exactly it is, you know, to, to get a job or to have a career? That's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. And what are the principles and attributes of someone who is going to have a successful career? I see that a lot of people out there do not have the depth required to thrive right so you see a lot of people leave in school and then all they want is that quick fix how can i have it like now how can i you know without necessarily getting down to developing you know deep rooted skills that would cause them to excel in the workplace so you see people leave and then they're like okay so where are the jobs you know for several years now i mean everyone has been guided with the 6334 educational system so some nobody had to tell you have to go to primary school you knew automatically you had to go to secondary you know and university and then you leave school and then you're wondering so who's going to tell me what the next thing to do is you know they, they're not able to think take ownership and even exercise the drive required to excel in the workplace so that's one thing I believe is really lacking. So the responsibility lies with each and every one of us to make the change we want to see in the world first in ourselves. No doubt, the five anecdotes carefully selected as focus for the summit covers the very important aspect of human lives. And knowledge of these will spur the next generation of young people to act right, even as the country celebrates its 19 years of uninterrupted democracy. The speakers also had a Democracy Day message to Nigerian youth and all. I think for me it's basically about look it's time for us to stay in our country and just do what we need to do. When you run out, a time comes when you realize that you don't really belong. 
and maybe when there's time you want to run back again. So why don't you just make this place better, make this place greater. This place can also become a most sought out place that everyone even out there wants to come. I believe the time is what? Now. Number one is to get involved. Getting involved basically from where you are. Your small circle, I call it your circle of influence. So is it your family? Is it your neighborhood? Is it your street? Key for me is your street. So getting involved, ensuring that um, things are done the right way, the proper way. You see things going the wrong way, participate. One thing I've always driven them for is participate in the youth forum on your streets. So getting involved for me at the local level and then we take it up to the higher level, growing the potentials, participate in politics and then sky is the beginning. I think what I have seen over time is that we are even dividing ourselves in the way we come together on national issues. We do not want to promote religious division or war, but we want to be able to have a voice so that when things are not going right, the Christian and the Christian body will be able to speak as one voice, just as we believe other faiths may be speaking with one voice. Number two, we can't change things from the outside. It is very, very impossible. And whatever we allow, it is what will dictate and dominate our lives. Therefore, I, I, I chorus the counsel and the advice of Mrs. Felix Adejuma that we need to spread out. We need to go in there, whether starting from the local, the local government to the state and so on. Many of those who are there now today, however you look at it, Pastor Oshibajo is become a relevant instrument in there. If he says in what we know him to be in the past, he ordinarily would not have come in. But now he's there and he's trying to encourage others to be there. So we want to say again, Christians, be united to get involved so that God can take over the land. The last word, the Bible is clear. Say, when the wicked are in authority, the people suffer. When the righteous are there, the people rejoice. We want not just Christians in name only, but those who are after Christ's life to take over. And we trust God, Nigeria will be a better place in the near future. I'm wishing Nigerians a happy democracy day, wishing them more prosperity, wishing them good governance, peaceful, credible elections, and security in particular. And I sincerely pray that Nigeria will be a united nation, a nation where we are one, like as we used to be. And I believe God that we will move to the level we are supposed to have been. For democracy to survive, Nigerians, you must exert your right as a citizen. You must get your PVCs. You must ask questions. You must probe. You must, you know, get out and vote. You must choose a side. In America, in nations that succeed in the world, people choose sides. They are Republicans, you know, conservatives. People choose sides and actively so. It's not, it's not a sin. It's not a sickness. It's not an ailment to belong to a party or to converse with a candidate. And don't stop at that. Just get on the street. Chase people. Write numbers. Raise money for the person you believe in. Actively help and be part of this change until Nigerians begin to see nation building as personal success the way we are out for our own success we might not move as fast as we want to move so please begin to think about the national success as your personal success my democracy word to nigerians firstly is to wish you a happy democracy day and to let you know that there cannot be a government without the people and of course the level of quality of the government we have is the reflection of the quality of people that we are so there can be a better government without a better you so i wish you a better you today go and join parties political parties as christians it's dirty then go and clean it up don't just go and don't just vote join parties form one and you know go and become a policy maker this is what we are waiting for let's chase out any leader that is against the church let's chase out any leader that is not aligned the body of christ to have peace let's chase out any leader that is aligned people to be killed anyhow these innocent people christians must wake up we thank god for prayer we are still praying 
But please go and join political parties. That you can't compromise. Watch out for Recap 2019. Happy Democracy Day, Nigeria. Thank <music> you.